I call Matt Ducey. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. It's an honour and a privilege to rise and speak at the first reading of the Greater Christchurch Regeneration uh, Bill. A bill I wholeheartedly support as a very proud born and bred Cantabrian. I'm looking forward to its uh, transition through the legislative process uh, at the Local Government and Environment Select Committee, a select committee that's full of very uh, energetic and able Cantabrians uh, from all sides of the House that will be working very closely to ensure the quality of this piece of legislation, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, can I say for me, I think this is personally will be the most important bill that I speak on uh, this year in the House and the importance for me but all people of Greater Christchurch and Canterbury. As I've always said, uh, very proud, uh, one-eyed Cantabrian. I remember growing up in Christchurch in the old days when Belfast was out of town. It was a day trip. You'd go over the Styx Mill Bridge. But now, after the earthquakes, Greater Christchurch has been withdraw redrawn, and we've seen great uh, urban movement to towns of my electorate, like Rangiora and Kaipoi. And it's great that we're moving from recovery into regeneration because, Mr Speaker, many young people like myself uh, growing up in Christchurch decided to go away, go on the OE. And a lot of the reasons I left Christchurch to go on my OE uh, and, and see a bit of the world were the reasons that actually drew me back to Christchurch and Canterbury. You know, a small town uh, in the bottom of the world. And when you go out and see other countries and you expand your world view, you see how competitive the world is out there, but you see how fantastic, vibrant and dynamic other cities are, Mr Speaker. And I'm passionate through this regeneration bill that we're going to be supporting uh, Christchurch to be vibrant and dynamic and to be the best new small city in the world. I must say at this stage, though, Mr Speaker, uh, talking uh, about the future and, and uh, aspirational like that, I must acknowledge that we are in a very difficult stage. Years three to seven show an international research uh, post-disaster can be still uh, problematic for some around psychological and social recovery. And I'd urge any that still need help or, or Cantabrians that know anyone, their friends or family that still need help, to come and see their local MP. Uh, we're here to help and support and advocate on your behalf. Mr Speaker, if I focus uh, on this bill and around the purpose, uh, the SERA Act will expire in April 2016 and we are moving from recovery uh, into uh, regeneration. And I know from my own background, Mr Speaker, uh, coming from a background of mental health and working in a model of recovery for a long time, it is about moving people through uh, and transitioning to them into a better quality, a better quality of life. And that's something I'll be touching on in my call today, Mr Speaker, about how this regeneration bill is about moving through the stages and transitioning the people of Canterbury from recovery into regeneration. It's a new legal framework to support the regeneration of Greater Christchurch over the next five years. So the SERA Act was probably a bit wider geographically than this bill. Looking at Greater Christchurch, I have a unique view on this, Mr Speaker, with my electorate covering part of uh, Christchurch City and North Christchurch there, uh, residents of Christchurch City Council, as well as residents of the Waimak District Council. And that covers towns like uh, Rangiora and Kaipoi. And the Greater Christchurch region will cover those towns and around Fernside as well. What we need to do, Mr Speaker, is make sure we maintain the momentum. And because what we're doing is we're rebuilding the city, uh, regenerating it. Not only do we want to protect the past, uh, if I look at the definition uh, in the bill, Mr Speaker, uh, I did write it down somewhere. Uh, around uh, regeneration described as restoration and urban renewal and development. So for me, it's not only about uh, restoring the past and protecting our, our, our history. As you know, Christchurch was uh, deemed the most English city outside of England. But it's also thinking about what will a city be used for in 20 or 30 years' time? Uh, my daughter, when she grows up, what, what type of city do we want for her uh, in the future? And that's what we're talking about, uh, Mr Speaker. I just want to acknowledge that earthquake uh, recovery and regeneration is one of the top four priorities 
of this government, and we are committed to the people of Canterbury. But when you look at this bill, the top five priority uh, issues for the next five to ten years this bill will cover, it will be about revitalising uh, Central Christchurch, maintaining economic performance, improving people's wellbeing, and I'd just like to acknowledge the work of the Associate Earthquake Recovery Minister, Nikki Wagner, around her uh, psychosocial performance plan, repairing and replacing housing, and repairing and replacing infrastructure and facilities. So I just want to acknowledge New Zealanders who have supported Cantabrians, who have stayed beside them and continue to support them. We've heard and talked about great stories like the Student Volunteer Army who came into a town of my electorate, Kaipoi, straight after the earthquakes. But it's also about acknowledging Cantabrians, Mr Speaker, who have got back up on their feet in a town like Canterbury, we talk about the, the Christchurch earthquakes, but it was actually the Canterbury earthquakes, and they were hard hit in the first earthquake. We lost about 1,000 houses, and, and they've got back up on their feet. And it's great to see Kai Boy doing so well. And just to acknowledge the role of this government uh, who have supported Cantabrians, and especially the earthquake recovery minister. And I say this not out of arrogance or complacency, now we sit on our hands, but the reason we won the party vote in the last election in Canterbury, we, because we put up a framework of policies that people believed in, we showed leadership, we showed decisions, and we took action. And that's what people want. And this Regenerate Bill continues that momentum. It continues that leadership. It continues that decision making and it continues that action to support the best new city in the world being rebuilt. Mr Speaker, when we look at regeneration, uh, there's some real good examples out there. And why Makareri is a fantastic example of getting on and regenerating their towns. We've opened the Rua Tanifa Kaipoi Civic Centre this year, the Rangiora Town Hall, the Oxford Town Hall, the Ashley Bridge. We've got the health hub in Rangiora opening up in a few weeks, retail precincts. And that is because, Mr Speaker, we're investing into the local economy. But I must say, for Christchurch specifically and the CBD, which a large part of this Regenerate entity will look at around anchor projects, they've had a lot more complexity to deal with. And it's quite right that the focus now will be more constrained on the CDBD around things like anchor projects. And that's what I spoke about before, Mr Speaker, when we look at what cities operate around the world, around vibrancy and uh, dynamism. And what we need, Mr Speaker, is to ensure over the next five or ten years we implement and develop the anchor projects, uh, the metro sports centre, uh, the convention centre that will be an economic catalyst uh, for the city, bringing better jobs and better incomes, and of course a stadium. You know we're very parochial in Canterbury. If you look at our Super 12 and 15 history, we are the best rugby region in the world. And we need a stadium that represents that. If you look at the World Cup at the moment, with the, with the Cardiff Stadium of 80,000 people coming in to watch a game, it energises the city. It's these anchor projects, Mr Speaker, that we need to ensure that we guarantee and we move forward to make sure the city is regenerated for the next generation as well, Mr Speaker. Overall, Mr Speaker, I wholeheartedly support this bill. I look forward to following it through the legislative process and I commend this bill to the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker.